Hello everyone, it's Daisy here and today's video is all about how to choose a notebook. I get asked all the time in the store from lots of customers how to choose a right notebook and a lot of the times people particularly ask me, they come up to us and they ask us um, if we can recommend a journal and there, I totally understand that question because there are so many different options when it comes to notebooks and we have a wall of notebooks in the store. So today's video is going Going to be taking a look at some of the different notebook options out there, explaining the different notebook sizes, paper sizes, style of the of the sheet of paper, as well as the binding style, and some other things and other factors to consider when you are thinking about a new notebook. So I hope you're excited for today's video. I have been thinking about making this one for a while now, so excited to dive right in and talk all about notebooks. First thing that everyone thinks about when they're thinking about buying a new notebook is probably the size of the notebook. So first off, I will say that here in the US, we grew up with the paper sizes of letter size and legal size. And these are the paper sizes that are in like the staples and the office supply stores when we're going to look for paper for our printers. And if you work in an office with a copier machine, you probably see these sizes all the time. So I have to say that those sizes make things a little bit confusing because those are North American standard sizes that are based in inches, while most of the rest of the world use another set of paper sizes. These were standardized in around the 1970s, but they were first introduced in Germany in the 1920s, and it starts with a size a set of paper and then there's a size B set of paper. So if you've ever walked into a stationery store and you've seen notebooks in A5 and A4, B6 and B7, you're probably wondering what that all means and how to make sense of that. It's actually all pretty straightforward once you get the hang of one notebook size because it's all relative to one another. I actually have prepared in front of me um, a whole set of the A sizes and a whole set of the B sizes. For today's video, we're really gonna stick with the size A set and the size B set because that's what you will find most commonly in most notebooks that you're shopping for. This little deck of notebooks and pads in front of me is the size A set. The biggest one here is actually an A4 size paper and the dimensions of this are just off of letter size so to make it a little bit more confusing, it comes close to the eight and a half by 11 that we all know so well that fits into our printers. A4 here is actually 8.3 inches by 11.7 inches. And the reason it's like not really breaking down into even inches is because it's metric. So the dimensions of this in centimeters are 21 centimeters by 29.7 centimeters. And there is A3 and it all starts with A0, but it's not very likely that you'll be looking at a notebook that's size A0 or A1 because that would just be ginormous to carry around. And then next up we have this one, which is, you will see, this one is actually called A5. And A5 is perfectly half. So you see this large sheet of paper is A4 and A5 is just half of A4. And the dimensions of an A5 notebook are 5.8 inches by 8.3 inches. And it goes all the way down from A4, A5, A6, A7, and so on and so forth. And to demonstrate that, I thought I would do a little show and tell. So this here is an A4 sheet of paper. I'm going to write here A4. This is an A4 sheet of paper. And what I'm going to do now is actually fold this sheet of paper in half, just like that. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just for the purposes of this, I'll do it roughly. So, we have an A4 sheet of paper that we've now folded in half, and that is going to become this A5 notebook. So you can see here, this is now A5. A5. And what I'm gonna do again 
if you can see this coming, is I'm going to fold the A5 in half and that's going to become A6. So I'm gonna fold A5 in half like this. And I do have an A6 notebook here. This is the Apica Premium CD notebook. This is such a good notebook with really smooth paper. And you can see here, that is an A6 notebook and it's fitting perfectly on our A4 sheet of paper that has been quartered into four. So this is now A6. <clears throat> I'm gonna do it once again and I'm gonna make a really tiny sheet of paper, which you guessed it, it's gonna be A7. <laughs> A7 over here, if I fold sheet of paper, fold it in half to become A7. And I have my handy dandy, tiny, adorable little life notebook here in A7. And of course, that is perfectly going to be the dimensions of this A7 sheet of paper. That's really cool to see and hopefully that helps you all to understand a little bit better the notebook sizing and how these standards work. And actually I do have a deck of B set size notebooks in front of me too. What's interesting about the B set is that the Japanese size B standard is actually a little bit bigger than the international size B standard, but some Japanese companies have actually adjusted their dimensions to fit this, but it's still pretty close. So I'm not going to go more into detail and confuse everyone even more, but we deal with mostly Japanese uh, stationery companies, so all of our notebook sizing are generally, even within the Bs, are generally consistent. So this here is a B5, and of course there is B4, which would be double this, and there's B3, which would be double that, so on and so forth, all the way to B0, giving us a ginormous sheet of paper, which wouldn't be a functional notebook, so we're not gonna talk about B0 today, we're talking about notebooks. So here, B5, and half of that, we have B6 over here, here, which I don't have a sheet of paper to fold to demonstrate and show you all, but you can see here that this is just about double the B6. So the B5 is just about double the B6. And then we have B7 over here, which is just half of B6, like that. And out of the Bs, we mostly just see this B5, B6, and B7 because the A's are really the most common notebook set of sizes that we see when it comes to uh, stationery and Japanese stationery as well. So now that we know a little bit about notebook sizes and maybe you have one notebook size in mind that is really good for you, in general, A5, I will say, tends to be our most popular notebook size for writing notebook, that one that you use on your desk, and then A6 and B6 are also quite popular. So this is an example of an A5 notebook here. And these dimensions are 5.8 in width by 8.3 inches in length. And another popular notebook size is the A6 size, which is below that. And then the B6 notebook size is also super, super popular. So between the A5, the B6, and the A6 notebook sizes, I think most people go with one of these notebook sizes. And then if you're looking for something really small and portable to literally fit in your pocket, then you would be thinking about the B7 and the A7 notebook sizes over here, which are maybe like, you know, a little bit smaller than my head <laughs> or about the size of my hand. So here we have a7, and here we have B7. And these are both good choices for pocket notebooks or notebooks that you slip into your bag for on-the-go writing. But if you're thinking about notebooks that are a little bit more for on-your-desk writing or more for note-taking and writing a lot more, then you wanna stick with A5, B6, and A6 too. The next thing that you want to think about when you are selecting a new notebook is the style of the sheet. Different notebook companies make more and more styles every year, it seems, and there's lots of super unique ones, but for the purposes of this video, we're gonna stick with the four main styles, and that is ruled, grid, dot grid, and blank. 
So I've ordered these in order of most structured to least structured. So the most structured would be this pile of notebooks that I have in front of me here. These are ruled notebooks. And this is probably the most like basic notebook. You think about selecting a notebook, you're probably thinking about a ruled notebook to begin with until your mind is changed by something you see or hear. So a ruled notebook is obviously just a lined notebook like this. Here we have the light pistachio b6 ruled notebook and it has light green pistachio lines and then there's also this pocket notebook that also happens to be ruled with a margin going down the center of the page which is a really unique feature of this notebook one of our most popular notebooks is the MD lined notebook over here um, this is actually this is actually a, a planner, but you get the idea. This is what a ruled notebook looks like. And um, then there are, of course, some larger ones like this Stology B5 ruled notebook. A ruled notebook just has lines going down the page. And most of the time, you're, you're kind of boxed in when you're getting a ruled notebook. Because of the lines on the page, you're really limited to just writing horizontally and following the line on the page, which is maybe exactly what you're looking for when you're looking to get a notebook. You just want to write, you just want to journal, you just want to take notes for your class. So that's what I would say is that if you're looking at a ruled notebook, you are best going to use it for note taking for class, note taking for a business meeting maybe, writing, journaling, writing stories. That's about it. That's what I would use a ruled notebook for. So it's very structured and it's for somebody who is looking for a lot of structure and just wants their notebook for one thing and that's writing. The next most popular uh, notebook sheet style that we're going to be talking about today is grid. I really enjoy a grid notebook personally and and I feel like some people might think that grid is more structured than lined, but I disagree <laughs> because I think there's something about adding that heart, that vertical line down the page that actually opens up my mind a little bit and encourages me to think not just in horizontals, but in verticals too. So it opens up grids and diagrams and charts and graphs. Here's a grid notebook and grid notebooks, obviously they are, you can have a tiny, tiny grid like this Clade and Life collaboration notebook, which has a two millimeter grid. So this is a tiny two millimeter grid. And then there's more standard grids that are like four and five millimeter, like this one from Apica Premium. Then there's the Stology. Stology is really well known for their grid notebooks. And this is a five millimeter grid. And Life, also more grid, more astrology, grid. Um, I think that a grid notebook is good for somebody who is maybe a designer, who is doing some charting, and also it can be used for writing too because within the grid you are finding horizontal lines. So you can choose to be really structured about what you're writing and write in prose and use it to take notes, but you can also break out of that horizontal line and use those vertical lines as guides for charts and graphs and um, all sorts of tracking and things like that. So the grid notebook I personally quite like and um, I recommend it for somebody who is looking for a little bit of structure but um, not to use their notebook as something that's not specifically just for writing. Next up in the styles of notebooks that we're going to be talking about is Doc Grid. So this is becoming more and more popular. I think it's because of the rise of bullet journaling, but we're seeing a lot more notebook makers make lots of Doc Grid notebooks. So it's essentially the grid that we were looking at before, but instead of those lines, you're going to have these dots all over the page in four millimeter spacing or five millimeter spacing sometimes depending on the brand and the make of the notebook and that's one doc red notebook and here's another doc red notebook with really creative colored pages this is the Midori soft color notebook doc red I would recommend for we're getting like as we as we progress through each of these style sheets we went from ruled to grid and now to doc grid we're really kind of loosening up our structure so doc grid because you're losing all of those lines is good for lots of things so people choose you can write in it you can um, 
plan in it. You can make charts and you can draw out monthly, weekly layouts. So it's perfect for bullet journaling and that's why people use it for bullet journaling. You can draw in it, you can collage in it. So um, people do really enjoy the doc grid. It's becoming more and more popular for notebook lovers who are stationary lovers who like to do all those things in their notebook and um, who don't necessarily want to be confined to the lines or the grid. They want to be able to go outside and that's kind of what the dot grid allows you to do. So it's really good for sketching, it's great for collaging, it's great for bullet journaling, but you can also use the dots as guides to write in a straight line. So you have all of the above if you want. Last up is the least structured of all. Like some people are terrified of the idea of this. This of course is the blank notebook. Blank, sometimes it's called plain pages. Obviously that means on lines, a blank page, just, just paper. Like that. Like that, wow. This is our Yoseka notebook in blank as well. So I don't think I need to explain what a blank notebook is too much to anybody, but this is a very unstructured notebook style. There's no lined pages, there's no dots, there's no grid, there's no nothing on the page to guide you. And so some people love a blank notebook because they want to be able to do whatever they want on the page. They want to be able to draw on the whole page if they want to. And they want to be able to uh, collage and put stickers all over their page and tape um, their stickers and their ephemera into their pages. And a blank page really gives you the freedom to be able to do all of that. But again, sometimes that blankness can be a little bit overwhelming. So um, I, I think that everyone knows in yourself, you know for yourself whether a blank notebook is for you or if it's not for you. For me, it's not for me. <laughs> it's not always for me. I love a dot grid and I love a grid. Um, the blank can be a little bit too much for me, but um, like I said, it's, it's suitable for people who know that they want a blank notebook and who know that they want just no restrictions whatsoever on their paper. And that's the main styles of sheets of paper that we're gonna talk about. Of course, there are beyond this, there are lots more, um, and there are many, many unique ones that we at Yoseka are seeing more and more often. Between these four styles, I think this really narrows it down and helps you begin to think about kind of what the perfect notebook for you might be. So the next factor that we're going to be talking about is the binding style. And this is an important thing to think about when you're thinking about your notebook because mainly because it matters for how well your notebook is going to hold up and it also affects how well your notebook is going to stay open on the pay on the desk if you have if you're just writing on the desk with nothing holding the paper down so the first notebook style that i will talk about is the stitched and glued that is something like this where inside the pages are sewn together so there's threading sewn um, sewing all of these sheets of paper together and you can see the little bundles of paper here and the little bundles of paper are actually called signatures. That's an important thing to consider because the number of signatures that your notebook has is actually what allows it to really stay open. So something like this is kind of staying open quite well in, depending on, and if you just crease down the page, it stays open really well. But if you are looking at a notebook with not a lot of signatures and stitched. This is also stitched like this. You can see the stitching, but there's no glue holding this together. This only has one signature. There's, it's only stitched in one place in this notebook. You can see the, the bundles of papers divide up really well. Um, and that means that if you're here in the notebook, it's just kind of gonna flop closed. If your notebook staying open is an important factor for you, you need to think about the stitching and you need to think about the signatures and how many bundles of paper there are in each signature. But back to the thread and the glue bound, this is the most sturdy type of notebook because we have essentially two, it combines two different 
binding styles. You have uh, the pages that are stitched together and the outside of it is actually glued in um, and protected with this kind of outside protector. So this is super sturdy and good for somebody who, if you're looking at a notebook with lots of pages, like this one has a hundred sheets of paper here, you kind of want it to stick around with you for a while because you're going to be writing in a hundred sheets of paper for a long, long time. So you want to you wanna have a sturdy notebook with a good binding style that will really hold up to the test of time, even if you're tossing it in your backpack. Then there is the binding style that is just stitched. So you can usually spot these pretty easily too. And that would be something like this Life Vermilion notebook over here. It has a stitched binding and it's just, so it's essentially just like one group of sheets of paper that have been folded in half and stitched together down the center. And as a result, this notebook sort of doesn't stay open all too well, but that is a stitch bound notebook. Stitch binding is pretty sturdy, but as since the stitches, since the threads, you can see here, the threads are exposed they can actually get caught onto things in your backpack. And if anybody's ever used a stitched bound notebook before with open stitching, you may have experienced that uh, over time, the stitching begins to fray a little bit, particularly at the top edge or the bottom edge where most of the contact is made with things in your notebook. The next style of binding that we're going to be talking about is glue bound. And for the most part, there aren't a ton of notebooks that are simply glue bound. It's usually a combination of stitched and glue bound. But if a notebook is just glue bound, it would look something like this and make it more of a pad of paper. So here we have a MDA4 pad of paper that has been glued on the top edge here and also glued on the edge over here. And what this allows you to do is rip away your page really easily. So glue binding is advantageous for notepads because it allows you to tear away pages super easily if you wanting to write or draw on just the top sheet of paper and you're wanting to get rid of all the other pages, you don't wanna collect them as you would in a notebook. Glue bound is great for you, but if you aren't trying to rip away your pages and you want all of your pages to stay stitched up into your notebook, glue binding might not be the best for you. The next step of binding that we're going to be looking at is called stapled and that is exactly what it sounds like. So staple bound notebooks are held together by staples. It has a really simple construction such as this Midori soft color notebook. We can see a staple here and a staple here and if we look into the pages of the notebook we see the staples, we see the inside of the staple over here and it's nothing surprising. It's just a, it's just a staple. It's how it's how all staples look, and it's no surprise then that also uh, staple bound notebooks usually tend to have a lower cost because they are easier for manufacturers to produce. You're just simply stapling a bunch of sheets of paper together and folding it in half and calling it a notebook. So um, the durability of these are not perfect. That's why staple bound notebooks tend to be in smaller sheets, um, smaller page counts, because it's not going to hold up in your backpack to a lot of wear and tear. If it's like a hundred pages, or if you're using it over two or three years, this is not going to do so well. But the good thing is that the staple bound does lower the cost and keep things more affordable for everybody. And who doesn't want that? <laughs> the last type of binding style that we're going to talk about is spiral or ring bound and spiral or ring bound notebooks are notebooks that all of us have definitely seen before. I think some people have strong feelings one way or the other on these, but I'll tell you why I like them and I'll tell you why I don't like them. So spiral bound notebooks look like this. They have uh, a ring binding. And sometimes the rings look like this, where they're separate rings, like this is one ring, this is another ring, and they're just like separate rings for each perforated hole in the notebook. And sometimes spiral notebooks are one continuous 
um, metal wire that runs through the notebook. When it is one continuous roll of spiral through the notebook, I think we've all had the experience of sort of the metal beginning to roll out of the notebook and the notebook being becoming a little bit unbound at the top edge or the bottom edge. And that's one drawback of a spiral bound notebook. Another drawback of a spiral notebook is that the spiral does tend to get a little bent out of shape in your bag if you're if you jam a lot of things into your backpack and once the spiral does get a little bent out of shape it can be hard to use your notebook and turn the pages so it can be a frustrating experience that being said some of the advantages of using a spiral bound notebook are that you can do this <laughs> So it's really nice um, if you have one with a kind of a hard cover and you can, these serve really well as portable notebooks or um, notebooks that you can use while standing up because essentially you can just stand and take notes or stand outside in a park and sketch something. So this is why a lot of sketchbooks are spiral bound notebooks with hard covers is because they work well in that function. Another thing that some people don't like about spirals is that they get a little bit uncomfortable to write with as you near the edge of the page and your hand is really going on that spiral. You have to bring your hand over the spiral to make the most use out of the page. And that's where this notebook kind of comes in. This is the Kokuyo Soft Ring Biz and it has a soft ring. It has like a silicone flexible ring binding so that when you put your hand on it like that, you're not hurting your hand and you can go all the way to the edge of the page. So we looked at the, the Kokuyo Soft Ring Biz A5 notebook and the Maruman Nemesine A5 top bound blank notebook which is also perforated, if anyone's interested in that. There are a couple more, but these are generally most of the notebooks that um, you see are covered by these five different types of binding styles. And hopefully between the different sizes of notebooks and the different style of sheet paper um, and the binding style, you all now have a pretty good sense of what kind of notebooks you might like and what kind of notebooks you might not like. On top of that, there are a few other factors to consider if you're thinking about getting a new notebook. And the first thing that I always ask somebody is is what you're going to be using the notebook for and where you're going to be using it. So um, if you are a person in the professional setting and you're looking for a notebook to use at work or in business meetings, I would say that a notebook with a minimalist, dark colored cover is probably pretty appropriate for you in the workplace. So some notebooks to look at would be the Stology Editor Series 365, which comes in a really minimal cover like this get a lot of pages for aggressive note taking during business meetings and a nice grid for you to use to chart things, for you to use to diagram and sketch out ideas. Um, so this is a great one to use for work as is any of the Maruman Nemesine notebooks. This one is blank, but they come in grid and dot grid and anything that you can think of. They come in line in tons of different sizes and the cover looks like this, making it super professional and appropriate to use in a workplace setting. If you're a student, on the other hand, something that might be good for you to think about is the number of pages. If you're a student and you're in college, you're looking for maybe a notebook for one of your courses that lasts a semester, which is really like four or five months if you're thinking about it, you don't need a ton of pages. So if you were to get Astology 365 Days Editor Series notebook for one of your subjects, you might be stuck with a lot of blank pages at the end of the semester. So for students, I recommend thinner notebooks with fewer pages like this. This is the Astology B5 uh, lined notebook. It's a good size for note taking. It's excellent paper. And in classes, you're most likely just going to be taking notes anyway. So we have the lined paper, which is pretty good for simply writing if that's all you're going to do. And then it comes with not so many pages. So you can get, um, you can get one of these and um, get a few different ones 
in different colors for your different subjects and different classes. So I would recommend this for students. Um, so that's an important question is where you're going to be using the notebook. And something else to consider when you're looking at notebooks is like the extra add-on features of a notebook. Some notebooks have super hard covers like this Leustrom has like a super hard cover and then these no, most of the notebooks that we looked at today have like flexible covers like this with paper covers. And then some notebooks come with a closure like this, which helps to keep all your pages together. This Leustrom notebook comes with a closure so you can keep all of your pages together. Really neat and if you've ever experienced kind of throwing a notebook into a backpack and getting the pages dented up and some pages start turning and some pages start folding, that's always super frustrating to me and that's where a notebook closure, an elastic closure, might come in handy. It keeps your notebook nicely, tightly closed so that those pages don't get messed up. Another factor is a feature called a bookmark tassel. I personally love a bookmark tassel. This here is a bookmark tassel but in a Midori MD notebook. It just helps you to mark your page so that you can immediately open to the page that you were last writing in and not have to flip through and look for where you were writing last. So I think this really improves the functionality of a notebook and makes it more likely for you to keep coming back and using your notebook. The last feature that some notebooks have is what I like to call a little pocket flap. Um, so this is a flap and you sometimes it's included in the back of these notebooks. This is a Leustrom and it comes in the back like this. And this one actually is gusseted so it holds quite a few papers in here. And this is great for people who like to slip things into their notebook and just kind of use their notebook as a catch-all for anything, any documents or anything. So these are just additional features that notebooks have that are nice to think about if it's something that you're looking for or something that you want to use. This definitely sort of narrows it down when you're looking for notebooks and makes it a little bit easier to know where to start looking in your notebooks. So that wraps it up for today's video. We talked about notebook sizes and the style of the sheet. We talked about the binding style of notebooks as well as some extra factors to consider when you're looking at notebooks. I hope that this video Video really helped you to narrow it down when you're thinking about where to look next for your next notebook. What size, what paper style, what hardcover, light cover, hardcover, softcover, um, whatever it is. So let us know in the comments if you are still on the search for the perfect notebook for you or if you found one, what is the winning formula for you? <laughs> Thank you so much for watching today's video and hope to see you soon in the next one. Bye!